Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is solve inequalities by addition or subtraction. Our objective is to solve inequalities by using the addition property and subtraction properties of inequalities. Our real world link is mail. A first class stamp can be used for letters and packages weighing 13 ounces or less. Fisher is mailing pictures to his grandmother and only has a first class stamp. His envelope weighs two ounces. Follow the steps to determine how much the pictures can weigh so that Fisher can use the stamp. Now, step one. Let x represent the weight of the pictures. Write and solve an equation to find the maximum weight of the pictures. Well, the weight of the envelope, as it says in our word problem here, is two ounces. So we're going to put in two plus the weight of the pictures, which we don't know, is going to be our variable x, and that's going to eat them equal the maximum weight of the package, which is 13. Now it says solve for x. Well, how do we get our x alone? Subtract 2 on both sides. That cancels out, and we're left with x equals 11. So the maximum weight of the pictures is 11 ounces. From there, step two, replace the equals sign in your equation with the less than or equal to symbol. So this means the weight of the envelope, two, plus the weight of the pictures, which we don't know, x. Those need to be less than or equal to 13. Now it says refer to step two. Name three possible values of x that will result in a true sentence. Well, can I put 9 in? 2 plus 9 is 11, and 11 is less than or equal to 13. Can I put 10 in? Well, 2 plus 10 is 12, and 12 is less than or equal to 13. Can I put, say, 12 in? Well, 2 plus 12 is 14, and 14 is not less than or equal to, so it can't be 12. Let's back down to 11. 2 plus 11 is 13, and 13 is equal to 13, so it is less than or equal to 13, and that works. So 9, 10, and 11 work, as would 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and of course, 1. Our key concept is the addition and subtraction properties of inequalities. You can solve inequalities by using the addition property of inequalities and the subtraction property of inequalities. When you add or subtract the same number from each side of an inequality, the inequality remains true. And we have some fancy symbols for that here, but our examples tell the story. It is true that 2 is less than 4. And if I add 3 to both sides of the inequality, the same number on both sides, 5 is less than 7, so it stays true. The same is also true for subtraction. If we start off with 6 is greater than 3, and we subtract 4 on both sides, 2 is still greater than negative 1. Now, an inequality is a mathematical sentence that compares quantities. Solving an inequality means finding values for the variable that make the inequality true. The table below gives some examples of the words you might use when describing different inequalities. For less than, we have less than and fewer than. For a greater than symbol, we have is greater than, is more than, exceeds. With the lines underneath, we have less than or equal to, which is right there, is no more than, is at most. And then for our greater than or equal to symbol, we could also describe that as is no less than and is at least. So in our guided example here, solve x plus 3 is greater than 10, we need to get our variable alone. So we're going to do the opposite of adding 3. We'll subtract the 3 from both sides, and we're left with x is greater than 7. Now, the check step is really kind of fun. We're not going to put the 7 back in for x. We're going to pick a number that is true for the inequality. What's a number that's greater than 7? Well, the book used 8. So 8 plus 3 needs to be greater than 10, is it? Yeah, 11 is greater than 10. So this is a true statement. What about our second example? What if the variable is on the right side? We're still going to solve it the same way we normally would. We want to work to get our variable alone. So instead of 
the minus 5, the opposite is adding 5, and negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. So negative 1 is greater than or equal to n, or we could write that also as n is less than or equal to negative 1. Notice in the first how it's pointing at the end. Well, as we rewrite the n on the left side, the symbol's still pointing to the end. So these two things mean the same thing. Negative 1 is greater than or equal to n, and negative, or n is less than or equal to negative 1. Same thing. And now we get to try it on our own. So a minus 3 is less than 8. Well, let's add 3 to both sides of the inequality here. This cancels out, and we are left with a is less than 11. Now for our check step, let's rewrite the original inequality. a minus 3 is less than 8. And again, we're not necessarily going to put in an 11. We need to pick a number that's less than 11. Well, a number less than 11 here could be 10, 9, 8. We'll just use the 10. Minus 3 is less than 8. And 10 minus 3 is 7. And 7 is less than 8. So most likely, A less than 11 is our answer. What about our decimal question here? Well, we need to subtract the 0 0.4 from both sides. And again, make sure you line up your decimals here. This is 7.0. This is going to cancel, and we're left with y is greater than or equal to 6 and 6 tenths. Now, for our check here, rewrite the original inequality. 4 tenths plus y is greater than or equal to 7. Pick a number for y that is greater than or equal to 6.6. .6. So you could pick 6.6, .6, but let's focus on the greater than for this. So 0 0.4 plus, well, let's go with 7. 7 is greater than 6.6. .6. Well, that will need to be greater than or equal to 7. And 4 tenths plus 7 is 7. And 4 tenths is greater than or equal to 7. And since that is true, then most likely y is greater than or equal to 6 and 6 tenths is the correct solution. Now when it comes to graphing inequalities, we still need to solve the same way we just solved the previous two. Then we need to put it on a number line. And we'll go through that process now. For a plus 1 half is less than 2. We do need to subtract the 1 half from both sides and we result with a is less than 1 and 1 half. Now to graph that, you can notice on the number line how we have an open dot at 1 and a half, right in between 1 and 2, and it's shaded towards the left where all the numbers are smaller than 1 and a half. Now we do have a note here. When graphing inequalities, an open dot is used when the value should not be included in the solution, as with greater than or less than. Think, is 1 and 1 half less than 1 and a half? No. So it just stays an open dot. Now a closed dot indicates the value is included in the solution, as with greater than or equal to or less than or equal to inequalities. And we'll see how that works now. Well, our first step in solving is to subtract this 4 from both sides of the inequality. This cancels out, and we are left with h is greater than 0. And when we go to graph this on a number line, I always like to put that number that I just solved for in the middle. So I'm going to put my 0 there. And then I like to pick at least one number bigger. You could always go with two numbers bigger. And at least one number smaller, and again, you could always go with two numbers smaller. Now, put an open circle at 0. Let's start there. Next, 
put in these numbers for h. For example, is negative 1, if I put in negative 1 for h, is negative 1 greater than 0? Well, no. Is negative 2 greater than 0? No. So we're not going to shade to the left. What about 1? If we put in the 1 for h, is 1 greater than 0? Yeah. Is 2 greater than 0? Yeah. So that's the side that we're going to shade towards. And so as we do that, we'll come from the circle and shade it towards all the numbers that are true. Now, whether or not to shade in the 0, well, ask yourself. Is 0 greater than 0? No, it's equal to, but it's not greater than. So we're going to keep it an open circle, an open dot. And that's our solution. What about d? x minus 6 is less than or equal to 4. Let's add 6 to both sides of the inequality here. This is going to cancel and x is going to need to be less than or equal to 10. So let's put 10 in the middle here. A number smaller, or a number larger, excuse me, could be 20. A number smaller could be 0. It doesn't have to be 11 and 9. No. Number larger, number smaller. And we will put, for now, an open circle at 10. And now we get to test. Ask yourself, is 0 less than or equal to 10? Yes, 0 is less than or equal to 10. What about our 20? Is 20 less than or equal to 10? No. So we're not going to be shading to the right. We'll actually be shading to the left. And lastly, open circle versus closed circle, or dot, is 10 less than or equal to 10? Yes, it is. 10 is equal to. So we get to shade that circle and have a closed dot now. And that's the solution. Now, just a quick random question here. Is 5, can x equal 5 be a solution? For this last graph? Well, would x equal 5 be somewhere where it's shaded? Yeah, somewhere right around there. So yes, x equals 5 is a solution. What about x equals negative 5? Well, believe it or not, it is. It's kind of included in that arrow there. x equals negative 5 is a solution of this inequality. Just because you don't technically see it, it is here on the left side of our inequality. And when it comes to writing inequalities, Dylan has $18 to ride go-karts and play games at the state fair. Suppose the go-karts cost $5.50. Write and solve an inequality to find the most he can spend on the games. Well, we're looking for the cost of the games. That is our unknown. And so that's going to be the variable in our inequality. X is going to be the cost of the games. What do we know where he's going to spend money on go-karts plus money on games? And he has $18 to spend. So we have the cost of the go-kart at $5.50 plus the cost of the games, we don't know, X. And that needs to be less than or equal to 18. We could spend 18, we can spend less than 18. And so that's our inequality. We don't know the cost of the games, which is why that's our variable. We're adding it to the cost of the go-kart, and again, it needs to be less than or equal to 18. And to solve the inequality, subtract the $5.50 from both sides, and he can spend less than or equal to $12.50. So at most, $12.50, but he could also spend less. And that is our lesson on solving inequalities by addition or subtraction. Good luck.